Keller here, Enthusiast Auto Group. We're at AG's HQ, and today we're going to go over this 2003 E39 M5. This final model year, carbon black over black with Titan trim, has just 28,000 miles. It's just arrived. It is fresh, fresh, fresh. And I wanted to bring you along for this initial processing, this uh, very, very initial writing of the EAG rejuvenation roadmap, which includes me spending a fair amount of time with the car, getting under the car, just doing a quick uh, assessment, going out for a quick little road test, and then uh, handing it off to the EAG pit crew to do their thing and really give it the uh, technical what for. Uh, this helps uh, create that marketing plan that, well, you're experiencing here in this video firsthand. Uh, if this is something of interest to you or one like it, we certainly would love to have a conversation with you. Uh, if you've got a very great uh, later production E39 M5, uh, we're certainly looking to add more to our revolving car collection and keep them in great and loving homes. Uh, if you've not already subscribed, please do and throw us a like if you like this video. Uh, certainly enjoying uh, getting to know everybody uh, through this medium and it's certainly uh, helpful in, in those initial conversations and those just learning about EAG for the first time. So uh, we're going to talk about this car. It's a Canadian spec car. It's in metric. And usually with Canadian spec cars, the undercarriage is, uh, well, a, a concern, and it should be. The, there's a lot of things going on when it snows a lot uh, in the Midwest or in the East Coast or in this case Canada. And the undercarriage is more times than not can be in a general state of disrepair, and that's not something you really want to sign up for and be responsible for as the next uh, owner if you can help it. And so getting under the car today will certainly uh, bode well to this car's condition and integrity. And well, uh, I'm certainly looking forward to showing you a lot of the unique things about this car as a Canadian spec and how it differs from United States uh, production as well. It's got a lot of weird things, weird to me that is, relative to all the E39s I've been in. And uh, well, we're gonna take a closer look at each one of them. So let's uh, get under the car, take a quick lap under there and then go take a quick drive. Let's take a lap around the M5 going over the cosmetic condition. It is really, really a gorgeous color. Uh, weather could not be better here in Cincinnati today. Not a cloud in the sky. And carbon black is a very, very light sensitive color. It's very dynamic and it's a black base with a very uh, tight uh, metallic blue finish uh, in terms of the uh, metallic flake count. And certainly looks fantastic when it's been corrected and is as clean as this car is today. Uh, here's uh, kind of what uh, unpaint corrected carbon looks like. This is a, another EAG first look and a member of the San Francisco collection that we've just recently acquired from the now former owner of BMW of San Francisco. And uh, well, when's the last time you saw two late production E39 dine in stage twos next to each other? Well, uh, here at EAG, you're gonna see that because that's what you're looking at. Uh, this car is quite unique in the fact that it's never been titled. This car was still on its original MSO and the personal, uh, well, hot rod, the, uh, the gumball rally car almost to a degree. I'll go more into the, the, that history with the video on this specific car. But really a, a fantastic example that's been overly cared for as you'd expect uh, when you have access to a franchise dealership and the full signature stage two package as it is, uh, well, the same on the, the, the now sold Sterling M5. Uh, look, congratulations to Wayne out in Oregon. It's been great uh, getting to know you over the past couple weeks and I really appreciate you watching all the videos. And uh, well, uh, this M5 is going to certainly uh, put a big smile on your face and I'll, I'll send you an exhaust video to uh, tempt you, uh, or well, to tide you over, I should say, while we go through and do our final rounds of rejuvenation on that car. as we are just starting our rounds with this. And, and when the cars get here, uh, after I've taken a quick little lap, done a, an undercarriage assessment, at some point I'm gonna go grab the paint meter and we're gonna, well, trust but verify it. It, it was told to me to be an all original paint car and a lot of guys will tell us that as best of their knowledge and they're not trying to be deceitful. They're just, uh, they don't see anything and that's that's what they're using to qualify if it's been painted or not. Well, uh, we, we appreciate that and we'll do the same with our eyes uh, uh, the difference being is it's all perspective and experience and and one's perspective uh, might not be the same as, as ours and you know science doesn't lie um, and uh, ensuring that it's what it is and, and this is all what's important in going through and trying to come up with that formula that uh, 
well, how did you arrive at this price for that car or this one? And being very consistent is hyper important for our business model, given that we're buying all of our cars back from our clients. We gotta sell it on the right number if we expect to be able to buy it back at a right and fair number. And uh, ensuring that it goes to the right home, it's come from the right home, you know, that's, uh, that's what we do every day. And uh, while well, we're still learning and never stop improving as the mantra at EAG, um, uh, I think with the E39 M5s, we're, we're, we kinda got it down. Um, <laughs> this one certainly is not disappointing in the least. Uh, very, very happy with, uh, with this car. And, you know, um, it's, this one's not going to be a cheap one. Um, but, you know, you get, you're going to get what you pay for. And, and it's all relative to, you know, the options and the color and the mileage and the history and the condition and uh, what all was done prior to our acquisition, what was done during our, our uh, rejuve. Uh, you know, the, the prior part, uh, well, it's all in this book and file. And there's no shortage of information uh, going over disqualifying that the previous owners really did a, a good job caring for the car. We've got the extra, well, all four of the keys and uh, uh, the other one there being in the ignition. One other fun thing I uh, noticed, uh, there's no question the previous owner really loved this car. Do you, do you see anything uh, abnormal looking at that wheel? You see anything that, mm, I've never seen that before. How about on this one? You see anything that, uh, is a little bit off and unique. You catch it yet? Those two wheels, do uh, you see anything there that's uh, uh, abnormal? Yeah, it's on, there, there too. All four of these wheels, have you caught it yet? The car has two locking lug nuts on every wheel. If uh, you weren't worried about uh, uh, somebody stealing your wheels with one lug nut, well, uh, have two locking lug nuts, and that's what those small little keys were on that keychain. Um, I've never seen two on the same wheel before, especially on a factory wheel. But, uh, you know, um, I can't fault the guy. He obviously loved his car, and, and he wanted it to protect it and keep it safe, and that's uh, what two lug locking lug nuts will do. So uh, let's jump in the car, take a fun little drive around the block, and uh, at that point I'll have a good idea on uh, how to position this car and maybe uh, come to a price too. I, I haven't even figured that out. That's what we're doing right now. First impressions are always very, very important, and the condition of this car, the first impression it has left on me is, um, well, uh, quite positive. Uh, it's really in spectacular shape. Carbon black is a difficult color and certainly can show uh, its wear and age much more so than say uh, titanium silver or uh, alpine white. Uh, the car has just had a full paint correction by the previous custodian ensuring that all the little marks here and there have been improved and perfected handing that car off the right way to the next enthusiast owner. That's what uh, uh, that's the old school way to do it. That's how we grew up and a lot of you guys watching this uh, know that you deliver your car with a full tank of gas and looking at its best as it can. And this car certainly uh, does not disappoint in that regard. Uh, the car has really a lot going for it. The condition of the interior does not fall out of character with the rest of the uh, exterior here as I'm showing it to you. And the options on this car, well, it has pretty much everything for the model year. Uh, it is a park distance control car. It is a folding rear seats, rear sunshades. It has the Titan interior trim. And well, uh, it even has the BMW Bluetooth there in the center console that has a uh, tab uh, broken off of that little uh, cubby there. Uh, all those little details are things that we're certainly going to pay mind to and add to the roadmap as we go through. Uh, we're sitting there at 45,465 kilometers. Uh, that's just a tick over 28,000 miles. Uh, it's a black sport interior, so it's got the vinyl dash as opposed to the leather dash on the extended leather cars, the heritage leather cars. So far, everything seems you know, pretty honest. Uh, the engine badge is original. It's not showing much wear there on the top, which is when these engines torque, you know, those do rub the, the felt uh, hood liner there. And the hood liner doesn't have any like coolant slings or spray. It doesn't have any uh, uh, rodent uh, chew marks on it, which is very important to see. We've got that famed yellow tank and these original headlight uh, stickers, which will indicate that the car's not had this core support replaced. You know, the next thing is, is we go and uh, you know, check the, uh, the headlight adjusters and just lift up here. And actually, you can see uh, the whole headlight assembly there moving inside, which is an uh, indication that this adjuster has let go. And uh, the other side is um, solid. 
So we do proactively rebuild those headlight adjusters if the car is at EAG for the first time. There's a host of different things that we do that I'll uh, just hint upon uh, as we go through the undercarriage of this car. But getting it sorted out and making it turnkey for the next guy, doing that future proofing as best as we know to. That's uh, what we want to do with every opportunity the first time one of these cars comes through. Uh, and, well, uh, you're going to pay either now or later uh, with, with any uh, used high-performance car. And we've uh, found that since we're going to spend so much money on these cars, which frankly is way more money than most spouses would ever authorize their better half to, to do, well, let's just take that option off the table and do it on the next owner's behalf so that uh, they're getting that turnkey car that they can use and enjoy and, and focus on other things to, uh, you know, to concern themselves with and worry about. Uh, let's go ahead and lift the car up. We'll go through the undercarriage uh, and show you a couple other unique things about this car uh, and then we'll come back down and show you some really interesting things like uh, what is that anybody know yet uh, well uh, I'll show you in a minute taking a look under the carbon m5 first uh, looks first glance it's pretty pretty tidy the Underside doesn't appear to have seen any type of chemical exposure. Uh, all the original Cosmoline is, is still there. I don't see any, uh, you know, major uh, red flags up front. We've got those uh, famed original rear sway bar brackets with a uh, crack there, as they all do. And that's one of the reasons we put the EAG billet brackets on. Uh, you'll see your alignment uh, uh, bolts there, which obviously have not had a tool on them in the past. And, that's going to give us some context clues that A, it's a low mileage car. B, the car probably has not had any type of major suspension damage from maybe say an accident or going over any type of road debris or obstacles. Uh, we're gonna probably go ahead and do an alignment prescribed by the EAG pit crew when they do their formal assessment. Uh, we've got the upper rear control arm boots that are split, uh, which you know, I don't know that any of them are not split if they're still remaining original. Uh, the, the forward boots though, I, I do think that those are still intact. Uh, you know, going through and taking care of all of these things, albeit they're not symptomatic at this point, you know, these are expenses and, and basically investments into the future of the car that the next owner is going to have to do at some point when they start noticing a shimmy or a wobble or a, a, a sound, um, you know, customer reports uh, this or that. Well, uh, are the AG customers report a darn fine driving instrument, and that's, uh, well, that's what, what it's all about and taking care of these things uh, proactively. Uh, we've got the original thrust arm bushings, I expect, for the mileage, and uh, I'm sure that there's probably a, a crack uh, in there. They, uh, there you go. So they're just starting to split. Uh, we'll see if there's any uh, a bit of uh, uh, vibration on the brake stab test. But, you know, we'll just go ahead and change those since they are original and might as well take care of them now while the car's here in the workshop. Uh, overall, the undercarriage, though, is without any of the you know, typical signs of, of oxidation and rust and uh, doesn't look like a Canadian car under here by stereotypical definition. Right before our acquisition, we did have uh, a PPI report presented to us, and it did note that the rear main was starting to leak, which, you know, that's just one of the things that they do over time, and the original clutch kits on these were not known for their uh, robust nature, so we'll go ahead and take care of, of the clutch and the rear main seal and all the other complementary things while we're in there. And, uh, you know, that's, uh, again, what the EAG process and program is all about. Uh, we've got a, a recently sold E39 M5. This one never even hit the website uh, and is going to another repeat client out in, well, uh, let's see, Boston. Congratulations, Chris. Uh, EAG purchase number six or seven, probably six and seven. He bought it with a, the E30 wagon as well. And uh, Tim is going through and doing his final post-sale inspection. We've done the work order. We've had it through now uh, three different technician uh, pit stops and, and having that diverse approach as I almost uh, trip over the uh, wheels and tires there that we've just road forced, um, you know, certainly gives us the, uh, the confidence to send that car far away uh, after all of these uh, steps and checks take place. Uh, it's no shortage of, of process and it's not a process that happens overnight or is super fast, but uh, Tim, he's Speedy Gonzalez over here, aren't you, Tim? Oh. <laughs> uh, what do you think of this M5? That's nice. Got a lot of uh, nice additions added onto it. Sweet. Yeah. Well, uh, I have personally driven this car a fair bit as well, and, and uh, I can certainly attest to that. As soon as it got here, uh, I took a, a road trip with the car up to the lake uh, to see the fa family and parents. Took the kids with me and knew that the car technically was going to be great, given the great enthusiasts that we bought the car from, which, uh, uh, Pat, uh, you did a great job with Adam 5. Thank you so much for being a great custodian. As I mentioned earlier, being a Canadian specification in metric, 
The SM5 has quite a few interesting doodads like this device. Does anybody know what that is yet? No? I'll, uh, I'll show you. Uh, there is a uh, matching component to that system here on the rear. And, well, uh, you're not going to see that a whole lot. Uh, I don't know exactly uh, who did that. Uh, well, I know the second owner did it. I think it was done at the BMW dealership, I, I actually thinking about it uh, with the records. And the, they even have a, a remote button for the uh, lock actuator in the trunk. Pretty, uh, pretty trick. Uh, also being Canadian, it has a fabric uh, rear parcel shelf as well as a fabric headliner. Uh, it is not the Alcantara that is the standard issue on the later production US M5s. Uh, what else is unique to this? Well, uh, of course the instrumentation is certainly going to be a giveaway and a lot of guys get a little bit concerned about the uh, metric and having to do math all the time and it's actually pretty easy 100 kilometers is 62 and change uh, 140 is you know a little over 80 uh, and you know where the needle's about supposed to be and uh, you know uh, shouldn't be too much of an issue for any of the u.s guys our e34 m5 wagon and all the european spec cars like the sport evos and whatnot all those are in metric and it's never uh, slowed any of those guys down, myself included. So uh, this would be an ideal candidate for export, though, if you wanted to go back to a European country. You would have to change the rear trunk area for a, a European spec license plate. A couple little changes here and there with the lights, but uh, it would definitely be an easier car to export with the metric setup than a standard U.S. variant. The camera system in this car is actually pretty trick. Right there on the column, you've got a button, just like the actuator for the trunk release. And your front cameras pop up. Uh, I guess that'll aid in uh, parallel parking, keeping away from curbs. And when you put it in reverse, the rear camera then pops up. And for the era, that's some pretty trick, a trick uh, bit of kit. Pretty neat. During my check-ins, every single button needs pushed. And well, I need to make sure everything is uh, sounding and working exactly the way that it should. M5s to me have kind of just become that old baseball glove or a good pair of jeans. I love these cars. Everybody's got their process and routine, but no twisty seat cables on this side. And we are ready to rock and roll. We have no shortage of bumpy roads around uh, the EAG HQ on a couple of side streets. And one of the real common things with the E39 M5s are the door seals and the, the rubber where it meets the, the body of the car. And we do have a uh, practice, a standard practice of, of lubricating those with a BMW issued, uh, uh, well, I guess I'll call it a lubricant because that's what it is. And it is uh, something that we do put on all of the seals. Uh, this one doesn't have any of the typical creaks right out the box. It's still going to get that treatment. Um, but, you know, the, the car first drive, first impression, it's very tight. Um, the feedback, everything is working exactly the way that you would hope and expect it to. I am quite pleased with this car. exciting drive that you'll see me take in a M5, but uh, it's certainly one of the more, um, well, uh, compliant. The car is really, really a nice, strong, solid, honest car. Um, I'm very happy. Well, I'm happy. I feel accomplished in finding something that I can complain about during this uh, initial check-in. The final stage resistor, the uh, unit that controls the voltage going to the blower fan, it's, it's working, but it's not working great. Press the max button and this should be kicking on at a level that, well, you wouldn't be able to hear me very clearly in 
it's a 100% working configuration. It's just on its way out, I expect, and with this low of mileage, it's not surprising that it is still an original unit. Uh, very, very common E39 shortcoming like the rear sway bar brackets and, and all the other things that we've covered in this video and, and all those EAG work orders you may have seen if you have asked for more information on the Dropbox file. So, uh, little details, but those little details certainly matter, and uh, well, I, I feel better now that I've been able to find a couple things that I can uh, add some improvement to, like the seat cables on this seat too when I uh, outfit this lovely camera. So, I uh, appreciate everybody tuning in. If you have not yet already subscribed, please do uh, throw us a thumbs up if you like this video. Uh, a lot more cool cars in the pipeline and certainly looking forward to helping keep the right enthusiast cars and the right enthusiast homes uh, and provide a lot of miles of smiles. <laughs> so thanks again for tuning in. See you.